Welcome to Opinion Journal. I'm Mary Kissel. Senator Chuck Hagel was confirmed as Defense Secretary on Tuesday, and the President said this. I will be counting on Chuck's judgment and counsel as we end the war in Afghanistan. Bring our troops home, stay ready to meet the threats of our time, and keep our military the finest fighting force in the world. Really? Global View columnist Brett Stevens is here. Brett, uh, what did this confirmation hearing teach us about Chuck Hagel? So when um, President Obama named Chuck Hagel to replace Leon Panetta, Secretary of Defense, the view, especially with our friends on the, shall we say, progressive left, was that he was this iconoclastic thinker, this guy who had thought profoundly about the nature of America's relations with the world. Could see Some around the, corners. Could see around corners. He was going to be a transformational, uh, uh, transformational Secretary of Defense. And besides, he was uh, a war hero. Now, it is absolutely true. Chuck Hagel served this country with honor and distinction as a sergeant in the Vietnam War. Okay? That is not itself a qualification to be Secretary of Defense. So what did we learn so about what, his so, views? So this is what we learned, okay? Number one, we learned that his views are malleable. You know, he used to have strong views about the influence of the Jewish lobby. He took those back. He used to be vehemently opposed to gay people being appointed to any position of trust in the United States government. He took that back. He used to be for engagement with Iran and adamantly opposed to any military strikes on the Islamic Republic. He, he took that back. Um, he used to be uh, a great believer that there was huge bloat in the Pentagon while well, he was kind of uh, bloated and squishy on that. So what we've learned is that this is a guy who will say anything to be confirmed but not say it very well. Well, the president says he's going to rely on him, on his judgment and counsel, and yet Chuck Hagel himself said, I'm not going to be in a policy-making well, role. So what do we make well, of that? Well, this is the most amazing thing. He act, I mean, he actually said in, in testimony to the Senate that I will not be making policy. <laughs> well, well, what are you, a clerk? I mean, this is this, this was a flabbergasting comment, but what? It, but it's a serious point because really, what it means is that President Obama's minions inside the machinery of the White House are going to be running the Defense Department. This is the largest single branch of executive uh, executive government. So Valerie Jarrett. Uh, or Dennis McDonough are now going to be in charge of the Pentagon? Are, are, are we a serious country anymore? Well, let's talk about the Republicans, because we always thought that this nomination was going to go through here on the editorial page. We may be at the exception of you. Um, but some you losing did, battles are worth fighting. Some losing battles, uh, but there were four Republicans who did vote for Chuck Hagel, Tad Cochran, Mike jo Johans, uh, Dick Shelby, and Rand Paul. Uh, what do you make of those votes? Well, they're each idiosyncratic. Rand Paul is essentially a libertarian who is kind of in sync in many ways with the foreign policy outlook of, um, of, the, uh, of the administration. Um, Mike Johans, senator from Nebraska, I think senatorial courtesy had to do that, although maybe he felt so sick to his stomach that he decided not to go for a second term. I don't know, that's speculation. I can't speak about Shelby and, and, and Cochran. But basically, 41 Republicans, all of Chuck Hagel's former colleagues, or nearly all of them, voted against him. No secretary of defense has been put into office on such a slender and such a sharply partisan basis. Brett, was this a useful exercise to inform the American public about what Chuck Hagel's views well, this, really, really the, are? Was this actually a success for the GOP? Well, I think it was, because essentially what it did is it, did is it, it deflated the Chuck Hagel bubble. Um, it um, neutered him, if you will, as a, as a Secretary of Defense. People are looking very carefully to see what, he do, uh, what, what he's doing. I think he's going to have to act a lot more cautiously given his totally out of the mainstream views about Israel, or previous views, I should say, about Israel, Iran, um, uh, the size of our, of, of our defense commitments. So to that extent, it was a very useful hearing. And you know, the American people deserve to know just who is serving them or disserving them in public office. Pricking, pricking the Hegel bubble. Global View columnist Brett Stevens. Pleasure. Thank you so much for being with us.